and that is DNA or biological information. In fact, scientists, I'm sure you read about this not long ago, finished mapping the human genome. And it was very interesting. The human genome is the, is the blueprint inside every cell that explains how to build all the proteins in your body. And I love the words of President Clinton when they announced this breakthrough. They'd actually mapped the human genome. He said, today, we are learning the language in which God created life. And that's exactly true. Before I begin, I want to clarify one little point. When Strobel and the rest of his ilk refer to DNA as being biological information, they are permitting the use of information theory to analyze that information. For the non-mathematicians, including Lee Strobel, information theory is a branch of mathematics devoted to the quantification of information. In short, if you want to measure how much information something contains, then information theory is the tool that you use. Which is brilliant! Because under information theory, all those gene duplications, polyploidisms, increased genetic variants, the nylon bug, antibiotic resistance, etc., all count as increases in biological information. When vague terms like biological information are pinned down and made rigorous, it becomes clear just how wrong Strobel and his ilk are. Quit rant aside, the point of this video is to ask the question, is DNA evidence of intelligence over evolution? The answer is no, not really. First and foremost, let me be clear about what DNA is and its importance to life. The DNA of every creature contains the blueprint for that creature. It contains the instructions needed to build all the chemicals and organelles needed for that creature to develop. The most important property the DNA has is that it can be replicated, allowing new organisms to be created by providing them with their own copy of the DNA blueprint. The process of DNA replication is complex. And I mean really stupefyingly complex. Is this evidence of intelligence over evolution? Well, no. You see, every so often this replication process goes wrong. In some cases it goes very wrong. Horribly wrong. It is hard to credit intelligence with a system that can at times fail so catastrophically. Check out Potholder 54's video for a great treatment of this. But it gets even better. It seems that DNA just cannot be replicated without the occurrence of errors. In 1952, the Lederbergs performed experiments in which they grew bacterial colonies from a single individual. These colonies contained variation that could not have been present in the starting individual. This variation arose from the flawed copying of DNA that occurred during reproduction. More recent experiments along the same theme include mapping the genome of E. coli and then remapping the genome after thousands of generations. The results show that E. coli DNA just doesn't say the same, with new variation appearing over many generations. Here comes the epiphany. The reason folk like Lee Strobel want to ascribe DNA to an intelligence is because they want to deny that evolution occurs. But given that DNA replication isn't perfect and that imperfect replication leads to variation, and given that only some of that variation will survive, it becomes clear that flawed DNA replication directly leads to evolution. While it is true that most DNA errors lead to very severe and quite debilitating diseases, some of these DNA errors can be useful. I'd like to finish with my favourite example that demonstrates that the answer to the question is DNA evidence of intelligence is a complete resounding no. We humans need to eat food containing vitamin C. If we don't get enough vitamin C, we get scurvy. Scurvy can involve bleeding gums, irritability, inability of cuts and wounds to heals, dry scaly skin and even anemia. Most other members of the animal kingdom have a gene that allows them to manufacture their own vitamin C. So if DNA really was the product of intelligence, you would have thought the designer would have given us our own copy of the vitamin C gene. Well, here's the rub. Our DNA does contain a copy of the vitamin C gene. It just doesn't work. The idea that an intelligence being would have given us a defective gene just doesn't make any sense. When evolutionary theory enters the picture, then it all becomes clear. Our nearest biological cousins, the primates, have the same defective gene. Their diet is rich in fruit, which is an excellent source of vitamin C. The idea that a common ancestor no longer required the vitamin C gene because of a fruit-rich diet makes perfect sense, particularly when overdoses of vitamin C can cause unwanted side effects. From a 1974 World Health Organization report, studies in man indicate that ascorbic acid has a diuretic effect at 5 mg per kilogram by weight in children and adults, and glycoscuria was observed with doses of 30 to 100 mg per kilogram. 
It should be noted that vitamin C isn't the only vestigial gene in human DNA that refutes intelligent design. Another good example is the olfactory receptor genes which are present in every primate whose divergence perfectly coincides with the evolutionary model. These non-functioning genes just don't make any sense without the evolutionary explanation. When creationists try and sound scientific by talking about biological information and the complexity of DNA, the reality is that almost everything found in DNA agrees with an evolutionary explanation. The question of whether or not DNA is evidence for intelligence over evolution can only be answered by actually examining DNA. And in doing so, the answer becomes clear. Is DNA evidence of intelligence over evolution? No. Not even close.